Okay. Are you ready to start? Okay. Yeah. So uh, we are going to do a message case talking about the long-term effects of this motion. First, I will have uh, two extraneous rebuttals and then uh, quite a bit of framing. Okay. Starting with a rebuttal to opening opposition, uh, they tell us that this will lower the level of STEM. The second thing they tell us is that we will essentially have uh, fixing discrimination, or however you're supposed to say a flamic again in English. Uh, I will have a rebuttal for each of these. First off, we do not think it will lower the level of STEM. Why? First off, we're talking because women have the same entry scores as men, maybe a little lower in psychometric, maybe a little higher in Bagouillot. Regardless, the reason they're currently dissuaded from jo joining STEM subjects is because of societal assumptions of them. Now, this additional incentive will convince universities to advertise to women specifically, support women uh, with more women-oriented activities at their universities, with, schol sorry, with scholarships giving specifically to women, which we think will be a very big part of this, because the university will be able to give it. It doesn't have to be directly from the government. The university gets a bunch of money to have women. The best way to keep those, men, those women in, in uh, a STEM topic, which is a much more difficult subject, is by giving them scholarships so they don't have to have another job. Uh, we think that uh, now, uh, and okay, yeah. Sorry, a little crazy here. Um, Okay, now, second of all, we, think, uh, we do not think that this is, that the motion is about uh, fixing discrimination. It's just, first of all, apart from the fact that it's not in the words, and it's a little sexist to assume that you would have to have that in the first place, we think that no university would choose to do it. Why? Lowering the entry bar is bad for a university. It decreases their prestige worldwide, it decreases their funding, it decreases the level of their classes, and therefore the level of their potential, potential master and um, and doctorate students. Uh, we, uh, so what will the university do instead of this lowering of the bar? They will increase their headhunting and their scholarships, uh, and of course there will be scholarships because they are much, much better for the university than lowering these entry level. Uh, okay, and, to, uh, and now to framing. Okay, thank you. So, we get to university and what do we see? 90% of the secretaries around us are female and 90% of the deans are male. This is the image that people in academy have of the academy and the people outside of the academy have it. Men are the, are, are the scientists, yeah? Uh, they have this unique role in society as being the holders of, uh, of knowledge and of uh, advancement, while women are primarily either secretaries or liberal arts majors, which while very interesting, comes with far less prestige and money, justified or unjustified, is, out, is not the question. So the message that is received by society is that women aren't scientists. Sure, they might be historians, they might be psychologists, they're not scientists, they don't have a lab coat. Now, scientists have an imp a very important role in society soon. So, uh, the, currently, uh, second bit of framing, currently the, very, the strong feminist message in society is a negative and conflictual Me Too movement message, which while super important, uh, focuses on gender conflict and unfortunately has a very negative response from much of the public. We prefer that the main message of feminism and the main, uh, the, uh, will be a positive one and a less contentious one so that women empowerment will have more overwhelming support throughout society. Before I go into my point, yes, second half. Yes, today universities have all incentives to get good women to learn there. The problem, as you say, is social, which means by the time they get to university, it's too late. Uh, look, it's very simple. If the university has more money and they can give part of that money to women or better their conditions, there will be more women in STEM. I believe that is concession. It is an entire concession from your uh, opening half. That's I don't think is where the debate is. So. What is the message that we are getting? We are getting the message that women can do STEM, that women do do STEM, and that they are very capable of doing well in STEM. Now, I want to say now to uh, OO that there will not be an opposite message, which is uh, that you know universities don't want women and they have to be bribed to accept them, uh, because A, this is a temporary, uh, like any uh, failing market fix, uh, and B, they will be held to the same bloody test, the same standards. No university gives different tests or different standards. And like I said, no university wants to decrease their levels. And C, they have something to prove, which gives additional motivation. Now, women in STEM will be long term, and therefore they will bring more of and they will bring more of the message as they pass. The, bring more women as they pass the message on. You're right. No. Uh, two. Who does this affect? We believe this affects all society and especially little girls. Currently, big names in pop science like Carl Sagan or Bill Nye or the science guy or Neil deGrasse Tyson, they're all men scientists. That is the stereotype people have in their head. That's what they see on TV. And that sends a certain message, which is women aren't scientists and they can't be because why else wouldn't they be? 
So with more female scientists, the likelihood of, of having them on TV increases. The likelihood of you being able to have female role models, the likelihood of people connecting, not, no longer connecting science with men, but with capable people of any, of any gender increases tremendously. Uh, before I continue, yes, P.O.I.? Yes. Um, you assume that with the same entry bar, scholarships are going to bring more women that are in the same level. Why is that exactly? Uh, because if you have to have a job while you're also studying, then you pick an easier subject. And if you don't have to have a job because you have a, uh, a scholarship, you can pick a harder subject. Already showed the delta, I don't think I need more. Okay, how do I think this will happen? Uh, how do I think this message will get out there? So first off, the university, simply by going for more women, by advertising to women, and by headhunting for capable women, will be putting out this message that women are good candidates for scientists and universities want them. Second, the universities want good press. If they're doing something that's seen as very liberal and feministic, they will want to spread that because that is currently in Western countries uh, seen as positive. Third, uh, there will be more depictions of women in TV news, in newspapers. Yeah, They will be far more associated with the concept. And uh, third, there will be more female high-tech millionaires, which is a natural result of having more female STEM students, more of them going into high-tech and therefore more of them succeeding. This gives money to female scientists, which we believe they'll even use in more science programs for girls or even just in general. This is very, very important in our ideas. And the impacts of this message in our society are First off, more qualified uh, STEM uh, and uh, new pers having new perspectives in science and in high tech industries, and, and that is different morals, different perspectives, a female perspective, which is ever so slightly biologically and socially different. Uh, girl empowerment, because we send the message that women can do this to every little girl who watches it. Uh, now, all of this already happens simply under the motion, but with the message, it becomes expounded and increased tenfold, and it keeps increasing itself over and over and over. We have women being viewed as experts, and most importantly, Importantly, we have a distribution of wealth and prestige uh, between genders. Uh, thank you very much. We are very happy to propose. Woo!